Okay, this session will be the, our presentation from Martin Dogmas. He, he was sharing the Moodle.net as the way to organize the OER globally. Yeah, so I changed, I changed the screen to you, Martin, you can start. We have 20 minutes to go. All right, thank you, Marian. And hello, everybody. Thanks for coming along. Um, uh, and very nice actually to be in a conference where there are people in my time zone for a change. I'm in Perth, Australia, and um, uh, that, that's not that common these days. So I'll uh, share some screens here. Uh, so I'm, I'm the, the Moodle uh, CEO and founder, um, among other things, but I'm just going to talk about uh, one very specific project, which is MoodleNet. Um, so MoodleNet is uh, a, a new thing that we've been working on for a while. And uh, the idea for it and the, the purpose of it is to try and uh, fill a, a gap that I've seen um, that to try um, generally when I see OER initiatives and there are many and, and lots of great ones, uh, they tend to be repositories of content and they are all over the world in different places and different languages. Um, and what I think there needs to be is a way to uh, make those things easier to find from one point. Um, and that really needs to be a curation process. I don't see that as being an automatic thing. It needs to be done by human beings who are saying there's a good thing over here and a good thing over there. And, um, and these are the things that are really useful for teaching this subject at this level in this language. Um, given uh, privacy and, uh, and uh, security concerns, um, and also as a, as a general trend of uh, openness, it makes sense that this system is not yet another .org site or a .net site that has the same problems uh, as the other ones. So we're trying to build this in a, a federated way so that lots of people can run different pieces of it uh, and it fits together into a single system that is easy to use. Um, and another a good example of something that works like that is, uh, for example, email. Nobody owns email, everyone owns email and everyone uses email and we've all been using it for 30 years. It's one of the most successful um, communication platforms that, that exists. So uh, we also wanna make sure that there are places in there to store data if you want to uh, into that network so that uh, you can upload files into it. So they have a perhaps a longer life than they might on um, uh, it, just a site that, that exists for the length of a grant or, or something like that. So uh, this has been an idea of being trying to get off the ground for quite a few years, but we only really put a few, some resources into it as Moodle um, in 2018. Uh, and we formed a very small development team of five uh, part-time people that came on board slowly during 2018. Uh, that team were very enamored with a particular um, standard called Activity Pub. This is a W3C standard. Um, and they, they focused on the, the prototype was really seen as a, a social network uh, more than a, um, a repository. And uh, there was a few, we've had a few uh, iterations of that. And uh, some of you may know those and have been part of those even. Um, Unfortunately, this, uh, this particular approach did not meet expectations a few times in a row. Uh, late last year and, and into the early part of this year, um, it, it, the UX wasn't really working. The, the complexity of the way it was designed under the surface wasn't great. And I, I put this here not to um, place blame on anyone or anything, but just to show that making software is quite hard. And, um, and also just to explain, actually, if you've been hearing about MoodleNet for a couple of years, why you can't use it yet. <laughs> um, and uh, this sort of tells the story that, uh, you know, we had most of the team left um, when, um, uh, when they failed to hit the release uh, time at the middle of this year. Uh, and the current state is that uh, we have a, a MoodleNet 1.0 beta with that with that software that was developed. And you can go and try it now if you want, go to moodle.net uh, and you can try it. 
And you'll probably pretty soon run into some of the problems um, that I'm talking about. But that's where we, we got to with that. Um, given the problems with it, we actually took a step back over the past couple of months and we've been redesigning it again, learning from our previous mistakes. Uh, and we're looking at a, a new team to take this forward. Um, we're simplifying the technology, so the, the stack of technologies to build this thing, and we're also simplifying the user, the user experience as well. And um, so that's what I want to show you a bit of in this session. One thing I really learned out of all of that is if you're going to build a, a, a real production system, um, it makes sense to use production, established production techniques. And this was a bit of an experiment with me. I let MoodleNet be uh, a project off to the side. And there's, there's a term for it called a skunkworks project, um, which uh, works for some things perhaps, but if you're gonna try and build something that's very stable and, and gonna last for years, I would advise that you don't let this happen. Um, this team didn't, wasn't very well connected with the rest of Moodle and, and our organization that was funding it. Um, and uh, it, it went down a path that uh, wasn't really very sustainable. So I, I would advise you, uh, if, you're, if you are building a technology, uh, any kind of technology project to try and make sure it's embedded in a sustainable thing um, and that the people themselves are also embedded in that sustainable thing so that it becomes better supported. Um, so I've learned something there and that's, that's a, a good thing. So um, the key features are um, we are we're dropping this communities feature from MoodleNet. Um, there was quite an emphasis on on creating communities around a topic, and there are already so many places to do that. We have uh, uh, you know all the social media and, and many other places to create communities. OEG is a community too. Um, we don't. We shouldn't be trying to do that. Uh, it's a lot of work to do it well, uh, and no one has really a lot of space for yet another community. Or oh, sorry, that flipped forward. Um, so we're just really focusing on the core, core thing, which is resources that are tagged with subjects and, and other metadata, um, collections of those, and comments or likes on things. So very simple, very uh, clear um, mode. And the mechanisms that work around this is like Spotify and YouTube. Both of these have places where you can declare a resource or upload a video or you know a song. And then there's playlists. And playlists are controlled by individuals who, who say, here's a playlist of things. And um, we want to really want to keep it as simple and easy to use as that. And then a commun communities will kind of arise because you'll have a lot of people following particular playlists or particular resources. I don't think there's many technical people in this in this meeting, but if you're interested, uh, we are actually making the, the software stack less esoteric than it was. That was also a problem. Uh, we had people building technologies on a, on a framework, which was, there's not many developers around who know how to use Elixir um, and, and these kinds of things. So we're, we're looking at something that's a lot has a lot more or um, support and there's a lot of developers around who know this stuff and that'll really help it uh, take off as an open source project as well. Um, so GraphQL is a graph query language um, is really interesting. And I thought some of you might be interested to see this one of the development drawings from uh, that we, we have recently, but uh, it, you define concepts with relationships in a kind of a graph and you're able to store things in the database just as objects, it's it's a very fluid way. It means we can grow the system um, without a lot of development time in the future. So it's a, a pretty uh, good thing. I'm imagining a lot of you will be interested by the metadata and and how we would define resources in this thing. Um, and that's really tricky because there are so many options and standards around that that. Um, choosing them is, is hard. So this is what we've chosen. And I'm really open, we're very open to feedback. We've, we have implemented some of these already, but they can change if we get better info. But the best, the best way to define what are education levels, for example, if you want to say that this resource is suitable for uh, you know, lower high school, um, 
the, the best thing we can find is the International Standard Classification of Education, or ICED, um, and the 2011 is the most recent version, and that defines the levels of education. Um, similarly, for the taxonomy of subjects or fields, again, there's no single international standard, but the best one we have is the International Standard Classification of Education Fields from 2013. Um, they're, they're, I have to say, both of these are not the most obvious to me and my background or to anyone and anyone's background. What they've tried to do is, is, is to make something, uh, and this is a UNESCO project, to make something that, uh, that works for across the globe. Um, so you can have equivalencies in levels and, and subjects. Uh, there'll also be a folksonomy on top, layered on top of that. So a hashtag um, mechanism as well. Uh, licenses, we're definitely pushing Creative Commons um, plus others. Uh, we're not restricting ourselves to particular Creative Commons licenses because a lot of resources out there already come with certain licenses and we can't change those. So we need to be able to support them as a system. Um, this is an interesting one. Like, how do you define pedagogically what the thing is? Is it a lesson plan? Is it a text? Uh, is it. Um, uh, so this isn't the format. This is like, what is it for pedagogically? Is it a whole course? Uh, so we had to build our own for that because we just could not find a single good definition. And very happy if you know one to if you let us know. But the IEEE um, and, and Dublin Core systems had some of it, but we needed to extend it with things that they didn't have. Same for formats. Um, the format of the thing is it a is it a PDF is it a video is it a um, uh, that kind of thing we we need to have a um, um, we need to develop something ourselves um, languages we just use ISO that's pretty easy so those are the main metadata being attached to every resource so this is what the new UX looks like this is an early peak this is a, a mock from a mock up uh, done by a UX one of our UX team uh, based on a number of new discussions. If you want to see the current interface, go look at Moodle.net, but this is roughly what the new interface is going to look like in a, in a couple of months. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a fictional university called University of Western Samoa, and this is their Moodle.net instance. There are, there'll be many instances of this software around. When you do a search, you're able to search all of them, but this particular instance is this site. So we want, to, we want to make sure that this site, which probably will focus on particular interests or subjects, um, shows that. So there's some, you can customize this front page for your own instance and it, there'll be all the a word cloud of the subjects that are being used in this instance and some new news as well uh, related to what's happening on this server. This is something that the old MoodleNet didn't have and it was really, it turns out to be quite important. So if you dive into a particular hashtag in this instance, say boomerangs, because I have quite an interest in boomerangs, uh, I make them, uh, you might have uh, uh, collections or uh, around boomerangs. And these are boomerang throwing and boomerang crafting techniques and boomerang physics. Um, and also resources that are tagged with that as well. And there are comments relating to this subject. And you can follow the subject. So if you're interested in any new stuff that's coming in on the subject, you can follow that and get notifications. Uh, going a bit deeper into one of those collections, you can see a collection is um, owned by somebody. So it's every, every collection has a curator. Uh, and here are the resources in that collection. And now you can start to see the integrations for LMSs. So, Moodle will be the first one, of course, because we're making it, but we want to make this open to any, anywhere you want to push this collection to, um, because a collection is going to be a very good basis for a, uh, any particular online course. Uh, you might want to just push all of these into your online course and then play with them in there and work them into the, the rest of your course. Uh, if you aren't the curator, you might want to suggest a resource. Pardon the spelling, because our UX guy is from Spain. Um, the, uh, you might want to, as another person, just say, hey, you know what? You're missing a really cool resource here, and you suggest one, or you upload one, and then the curator can accept it or not. Um, and again, comments at that level 
and we go down one level deeper into a particular resource and there'll be previews, uh, tagging and so on. You can just send that off to some other system and, uh, and again, comments. So this is sort of similar to a YouTube page in this case, but this could easily be a whole Moodle course here. This could be a, um, a PDF. It could be a website. It could be any of those things. Um, along the top, you'll see there's this, the things that you're interested in, the, your own things that you're following always appear there. So you can always, you know, you probably have five or 10 things that you're always following and you can jump to them very quickly up the top there. Um, this is what the search page could look like. Uh, so that uh, when you do a search for Boomerang at the top here, it shows you here are the subjects and collections and uh, that are related and here are particular resources. And this is where if you check this box and say other MoodleNet sites, that it'll do the search across the whole world through all of the MoodleNet sites, um, which are all connected via a, a giant search engine. And you're able to filter down by license or by type or by date or other things as well. Um, and then of course you have profiles, um, a user profile for uh, yourself um, where you can control and there's going to be a, a notion of points that you build up. So you gain points for doing things. So anytime you uh, upload resources or create collections or uh, like or comment on things, you, you gain points. Um, and this is someone else's profile. Um, you can also give people points. So if you just like what someone's doing and you just want to give them a, um, uh, something, you can do that too. Um, most social media doesn't really have that. You can follow somebody, but maybe you don't want to follow everything they're doing. You just want to give them some sort of kudos. So um, the idea is that there'll be a way to do that as well. And that's it. Like other things we're kind of leaving out. We're just keeping it super simple. Um, and uh, we really want to make this a, a usable, solid first release. So we're aiming for that in, very, in early in 2021. It's not going to take as long as uh, the previous versions did because we already have a lot of the pieces and a lot of the, the, the work is done. We have a much better idea of what we're doing and we're keeping it simpler. Um, we are hiring. If you're interested in getting involved, um, talk to me. Uh, very keen to talk to anyone who's interested in get, making this concept a reality. Uh, if, when this release comes out, and it's available. And we will have one main instance running at Moodle.net um, and that will be connecting to others. And um, so there's, there's ways you can help. Um, we hope you like it and you will use Moodle.net, which will, we will always maintain as a free service and it'll always be a, uh, the primary drop-in point. Uh, you can run a server yourself to extend that network. Uh, maybe you have a particular interest in curating OER in your area and you'd rather do that on your own server and have full control over that, um, then fantastic. And then you just uh, you just tell the Moodle net network that you have this server and it'll appear in searches for everyone else. Uh, we'll need help finding funding and developers to improve the functionality from that point. There'll always be improvements we can be doing. For example, integrations with other software uh, is gonna be a pretty early one. Um, and lastly, I think that if we had a place like this to store curations of OER, um, it would be great if new and old OER projects could see that as part of their, uh, part of their project to, you know, as well as creating a repository of things to make sure they get listed in MoodleNet somewhere, in some instance of MoodleNet to say, look, we have all these resources and that can be an automated thing so that, uh, that appears in the network can be easily found and then other people can curate that into their own collections uh, uh, as necessary. So that's some things we, we see coming up. So I'm, I'm gonna stop there. Uh, that's um, a brief update on MoodleNet and where we're at and what we're doing, get in touch. I think we have some time for questions if there's any. Okay, thank you, Martin. Yeah, you are right on time. <laughs> it's almost one minute left. <laughs> I, I'm half German. That's, that's, that's how that works. Yeah, uh, uh, there's one question from audience. Uh, that is uh, how to deal with gran 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 uh, granularity of items, such as uh, media or your files, anything? 
you have info on that? So we are, that's, these are open questions. Uh, we're really trying to keep that um, fluid, uh, that in the description of the type of resource, um, that that is one, those things are mentioned. So you're able to say, uh, this thing, this resource is a whole course of things. Uh, it's a collection of things. So you might just be pointing to a site that has a million things on it. Um, and you're able to say that. Um, in the search, you could, you'll be able to, to choose what granularity you're looking for. So if you're looking for a particular thing, you might say, well, exclude um, the big sites and or something like that. So, um, Okay, we'll thank you. Goes. I think there are more to talk about. So uh, I welcome everyone to, uh, to discuss more uh, in the OEG Connect with you. Yeah, I think you yep. will be there always. Okay, oh, yeah. thank you everyone. Our session will end here.